Now we are moving Fine. forward for another uh, lecture in this session that is by Dr. Viral Shah. And he is going to talk on new advancement in CGM. Dr. Viral Shah, welcome. He is an associate professor of medicine and pediatrics and director of bone metabolism and diabetes laboratory at Barbara Davis Center for Diabetes, University of Colorado, Denver. His research focuses on clinical trials of diabetes technologies to improve glycemic control and translational research to understand the effect of diabetes on bone in type 1 diabetes. He has been a principal investigator on a number of clinical trials in type 1 diabetes. He has published over 120 research articles, including original article invited reviews and editorials and book chapters. And he has served on various leadership roles, such as communication director of Diabetes Technology Interest Group for the ADA in 2018-20, steering committee member of the Type 1 Diabetes Exchange Clinical Registry and ACE ASAP Writing Committee. Dr. Viral Shah, the dais is all yours. All right, thank you. Um, before, Viral, uh, before Viral says anything, Mustafa, I think Dr. Mustafa, I need to add something for Viral. I've had the honor of sure. listening to Viral a few times and I'm, I think it's one of the lectures to watch out for and with his, you know, his eloquency and his, you know, making things so simplistically, I think I'm a big fan of Viral, wherever I've heard him. Thank you. Thank and you, Dr. Mustafa. It's a viral for... phenomenon all over the world. Yeah, I uh, kind of a joke Viral. around that I'm not responsible for this coronavirus, so don't blame <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> And thank you, uh, Dr. Mithun, for your kind words. I uh, appreciate that. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, and thank you, Dr. Sabu, as always, uh, putting up like a great conference, great contents. And I hope all the audience have enjoyed the talk, uh, many talks on day one and probably you will enjoy that done day two as well. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, all right. So I'm from Denver. Um, slightly luckier than Dr. Sen because it's a 9 p.m., not 11, uh, because it's a two hour difference from east to Midwest. Um, so here are my disclosure uh, for today's talk, uh, not probably relevant. Um, what I'm gonna talk today is briefly touch on the historical aspect. And then I will speak about what are the currently available CGMs. And again, I'm more familiar with the US market. Uh, so probably it's quite possible that I may not have mentioned about some CGMs which may be available in Europe or other countries. And then I will speak uh, just briefly about the future, what future look like. Um, so many of you may have seen this slide um, published by me and Satish uh, way back in 2014. Um, and we know that now it's almost 100th anniversary for discovery of insulin by Banting and Best uh, in 1921. Um, and with that insulin discovery, you know, um, yes, it saved a lot of lives of people with diabetes. And at the time, it was more of like insulin dependent diabetes uh, or juvenile diabetes. We call them as type one diabetes right now. But we wanted something um, to quantify glucose so that we can uh, improve the insulin um, delivery system or insulin injections or insulin doses adequately to improve the glycemic control. Now we all learn in a medical school, probably I'm gonna uh, have you guys recall a little bit about the Benedict test, right? When we used to do that, take a urine in a, a test tubes, put a Benedict reaction in that, uh, shake it very well and kind of a warm it up and then it will change in the color. And based on the color, you can just say roughly that this is what the glucose look like. Uh, this is how uh, first 20 years of uh, diabetes management was after the discovery of insulin. The first urine test kit where you just dip that in a urine and it will change the color, which will make life simple at the time 
was somewhere like an inventor in 1945. So it took almost like 25 years to have the first urine dip test, which we don't do nowadays, right? Um, and uh, it took another 20 years to have our first glucose test strip made by the dextro um, streaks in 1965. And when we talk about the glucose test strip, you might be like thinking in your mind that this is with the glucose meter. Now remember that the meter were not invented first, the test strips were invented first. What they used to do is that take out a large drop of blood, put on the top of that, uh, it wait for about a minute or two, wash out the blood and then look at the color change. Um, that was 1965, the first uh, glucose test strip was. And then it was paid with the glucose meter in 1970. So it took another like 30 years to move from a urine glucose to, to glucose meter based uh, glucose monitoring. And then 1999 was a first professional CGM by Medtronic, CGMS. And this is, I think, the word that a lot of people are using. So now remember that the CGMS is kind of a trademark terminology of Medtronic, not all CGM or CGMS system. And they used to, I think they used to call it the CGM gold. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, something like that. Um, 1999, so another like 20, 30 years to have some kind of a CGM which was not successful at the time because of a lot of other issues. And the 2001 was the first real time continuous glucose monitor, glucose watch. And very interesting concept, right? You just have a watch. Um, it's a totally non-invasive and based on Roman spectroscopy and some other thermal principle, it will measure the intertitial glucose reflect into you know a small screen. Uh, so you can see here, hopefully you can see my cursor here, but um, that's a watch. And again, you would think that, wow, this is kind of like very innovative, but it didn't uh, pick up the market at the time because of, again, a lot of other issues with this technology. But anyway, uh, the, in, in a short, 1921 to 2001, almost 80 years plus, we did not have really best way of estimating glucose translating that into kind of a clinical perspective so that the clinicians and the patient can manage their diabetes better. And now within that 20 years from a 2001 to 2021 now, um, huge change in the way that we are managing diabetes. There is a remarkable improvement in CGM technologies um, in last, particularly one decade, I would say, you know, 10 years has changed everything. This is a famous cartoon. I just took it from a Pinterest. Um, many of you have seen this probably. And they say that the three apples have changed the world. Of course, the Eve's Apple, Newton's, and the Steve Jobs Apple iPhone, that every one of us nowadays have an Apple iPhone. And, and it has become a kind of like our part of our organ. You know, people cannot live without iPhones or smartphones in, in general. Similarly, I would put that kind of analogy into the CGM is that the CGM has changed the world of diabetes, the diabetes management. Think about the A1C from a DCCT to now, uh, we have focused on A1Cs. We have managed our patients based on the A1Cs and we judged them based on the A1C values, unfortunately, where A1C cannot tell you that how you reached the success. It just can tell you that, you know, it's a success or an un un unsuccess but there are multiple limitations to the A1C. And I'm sure that there are many talks during this DiaCare conference has been devoted into the concept of beyond A1C, CGM-based matrix in the management of diabetes, for example, time in range, um, glucose management indicator, GMI, and those kind of a things uh, has come up because of CGM. And CGM can tell us uh, very much details of how we are achieving to that kind of a long-term glycemic control that we surrogately measure with the A1C. Um, not only that, it also provides a 24 by seven snapshot so that um, it can give you really broad view of how the patient is managing diabetes and uh, how we can improve that uh, over time. And also it makes life easy. Um, this is kind of like a finger of someone with type one diabetes having diabetes for 40, 50 years. You know, if you have to poke six times or seven times a day to keep your A1C under seven for 50 years, think about that, how you're gonna, your finger is gonna look like, right? Um, 
So this is all has changed because of the CGM. So I call this is kind of like a fourth, uh, short of like, uh, like an apple that has changed the world of um, uh, diabetes. Um, so now I'm gonna switch the gear and talk about what CGM technologies are currently available in the market. Um, and broadly, I would divide them uh, into three categories. Number one is the real-time CGM. When I say real-time, it's more about the real-time display rather than the real-time chemical process that is happening within the interstitial fluid. So real-time display, you have a Medtronic systems where the Medtronic Guardian Connect, um, they have a standalone Guardian Connect. CGM or the same CGM can, can, can be connected to the insulin pump, their on pump, which is called a 670G um, in the US market. It's also, I think it's the same name in the Europe market and the India. And now they have a 770G where the pump is slightly different where they have a Bluetooth within the pump. Um, so that in future iteration, you have to just change the software rather than changing the entire hardware, which is a pump here. Um, and I think in Europe also there is an 780G, which um, uses the same transmitter with some modification. The another CGM in the US market, which uh, is um, not widely penetrated in the Indian market is the Dexcom. The Dexcom has a three different generation, G4, G5, G6. G4 is available in India. Now G5 and G6 is in the US. And we mostly use the G6 nowadays because G4 and G5 are going to be um, phased out over time. Um, again, the standalone CGM, it's only CGM company. So um, they don't manufacture pump, but their CGM can be incorporated uh, or, or partnered with different pumps uh, or different manufacturers that makes the insulin pump. And then you can have a hybrid closed loop system. The um, third one in the real-time display CGM is the Eversense. The Eversense is the only implantable CGM approved by the FDA in the US. It's also in the Europe, but in the Europe, it's a 180 days approval, meaning by that six month in US, it's only for a three months at this moment of time. And they are doing a study called as promise study to extend that duration up to 180 days so that the patient has to have only two procedures in a year and then you're done. So just the two pricks, kind of a small nicks inside your skin, and um, you will have a continuous glucose monitoring for the entire year, beautiful concept. Um, the second category of CGMs are the intermittently scanned CGM or flash glucose monitoring system, which is a very widely popular throughout the world, including the India, uh, and famously, um, it's the Libre system, Libre 1 and Libre 2. I'm not sure which generation is available in India, but uh, you can dis differentiate different generation of Libre by their color of scanner. So if it's a gray scanner, then it's a professional version. If it's a black, that's a Libre one. If it's a blue, uh, it's a Libre two. And uh, I was just like asking them that, why do you have a different colors? And it's a very funny answer, but they are like, okay, our engineering team decided like, because it has a Bluetooth, we wanted to have a blue color of the scanner. Uh, anyway, uh, so the Libre 2 is a uh, blue color scanner. Um, now remember that it, it is also a real time CGM in a way that it, it does um, calculate glucose value from an interstitial fluid every minute, uh, while other CGMs are doing every five minutes. It's not that they are not doing it every minute, they do it but then they aggregate the value for that five minutes versus that flash is showing you every minute value. Um, uh, but the display is not a real time. So when I say real time CGM versus the flash CGM, it's mainly about the display function rather than the interstitial glucose uh, process. Then the professional CGM, what it means, or you can call it a blinded CGM, meaning by that you put the CGM in, in your clinic um, then the patient would use it for a week or two, come back to your clinic, then you download that CGM in your computer um, and then interpret that glucose values and then make some changes in the, in the management of the patients, either changing the medication, changing the dose of insulin, something like that. Um, I think iPro2 was available in India and very widely used before, but again, the cost was prohibitive, but with the Freestyle, I think uh, Freestyle has captured the market uh, in many parts of the world, including India. So I think the Freestyle is commonly used. 
Um, the Dexcom Pro has just recently available uh, in 2019 in US. Um, Dexcom was only the real time before, but they also now moved into the uh, professional CGM market as well. And this is a good modality for patients with type 2 diabetes, where uh, particularly there's those who are on a less intensive insulin regimen or oral medication, where you can just use the professional CGM once in a two months or three months or six months, get the idea, kind of a snapshot of their glucose profile, and then make some kind of a meaningful adjustment into their insulin therapy or intensify the insulin therapy or other medications, oral medication. Um, each CGM has their own pros and cons. Um, uh, this is my slide that I just give it to the patients because when they have a questions about like, okay, which is best for me? Now, trust me, no matter what CGM has, whatever kind of a like, you know, um, best features, but it's never going to be for everybody because we all are unique. Uh, we have unique needs. And so um, this is kind of a table that I just give it to the patient, give them a time, give them a brochures and let them decide what CGM is going to be best for them. Um, and I will just give you an example. Like for example, the patient with type one or type two diabetes hates the alerts because he cannot get a good sleep at night. It just like keeps beeping. Then I would say Libre is the best system for that patient. Or when there is a issue of a cost, then again, the Libre is the cost effective. Uh, let's say now uh, the patient who is blind totally uh, i see a few blind patients with type 1 diabetes or wolfram syndrome it's called as didmore syndrome diabetes mellitus diabetes insipidus and optic atrophy where the patients are blind um, now for those patients they cannot see anything right so the dexcom is the best because it can integrate with the apple siri so you have to just ask the siri hey siri what's my glucose and then Siri will tell you that your glucose is 120 and sugar is flat or it's going up or it's going down. Um, and it really helps a lot of patients. And we published our paper just a few months back that uh, Dexcom Siri feature is really helpful in a blind patients with type 1 diabetes or different kind of a diabetes. Now, the patients who want some kind of a connection with the pump, then the Libre or Eversense are not going to be the good um, CGM for them because both of those kind of a CGMs are not connected with the pump at this moment. Now they do have a landscape where they are going to be uh, integrated with different insulin pumps uh, to have a hybrid closed loop system. But at this moment, it will be Dexcom versus the Medtronic CGM. And each one has their own pro pros and cons. So you provide all the information to the patient and then patient will decide what is the best for them uh, depending on their needs. Uh, but you, the uh, classification that I showed you here, like a real time or a flash or a professional, this is way of classifying the CGM by us. This is not how the FDA looks at. For an FDA perspective, first thing is that whether it's a medical device or not. Now you will be surprised that plastic tongue spatula to examine your throat is considered as a medical device in the US by the US FDA. And it has to go through the US FDA approval. So a lot of things are considered as a medical devices and um, the CGM of course is a medical device. Then they have a lot of different classification based on that. Uh, uh, we have to see that which pathway it fits into and CGM fits into the chemistry or toxicology. So FDA has different divisions. They review the application. And the CGM goes into that uh, chemistry and the toxicology division. And then they divide them into different class, class one, class two, and class three device. For example, tongue spatula that I gave you an example is a class one device where probably there are no much risk, a uh, very low risk device. Um, class two is kind of like where the benefits are far, far, far than the risk. And the class three device are considered as a high risk. And just to give you an example, glucose meters are considered as a class two device uh, versus the insulin pumps are considered as a class three device. Before um, last year, 2019, all CGMs were considered under class three, actually. That means there is a potential risk. Um, and then risk was mainly because you are administering insulin based on those numbers, which may makes you um, uh, hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic, and that's why it, is, it was considered as a high risk category. However, FDA was very clear that we wanted to put um, the CGM into the class two category, provided that they meet the accuracy standard. 
Now, the accuracy can be defined in multiple ways. The MARD, I think you have heard this kind of a term in many conferences, it's called a mean absolute relative difference. MARD, it's one way of uh, looking at the CGM accuracy. Lower the number, the, it is better. But the FDA doesn't look at the only MARD. It looks into the accuracy into different zones. Um, the accuracy within the normal glycemic range, hypoglycemic, hyperglycemic, and how much values are within that plus or minus 15% or plus or minus 15 if it's less than 100. And based on that accuracy standard, uh, FDA is willing to allow the CGM into this class two category called as interoperable CGM or ICGM. Now there are many, many benefits to the ICGM, which is beyond um, the discussion for this talk, but this category is very exciting. And those who want to know more can read this article it was written by again, um, Satish uh, from my institution. Um, last year, 2018, sorry, um, end of 2018. Uh, beautifully, nice written edit editorial. Um, it is kind of like a new era when the Dexcom G6 got an approval under the class two, which is ICGM category, interoperable CGM category. It opened up a, like a new uh, avenues for a lot of different companies to collaborate and move our direction of the future research into kind of a fast pace. Um, now, Freestyle Libre 2 is also ICGM, um, just uh, for your information, and Eversense is getting the ICGM uh, in a future generation, hopefully. Uh, Medtronic is also working in that direction, so all the CGM companies are moving into that direction. And of course, the CGM accuracy has ch uh, changed over time, right? This was the first one I talked that in my first slide, 2001, the Gluco Watch. Look at the MARD, the MARD, again, remember that part, higher it's bad, lower it's good, 22%. That means I would not rely on that CGM, it's just the crap. Versus all the CGM which are currently available. Now this slide, my slide is actually one year old. So these numbers have changed a little bit, but all the CGMs are in the range of about 9% MARD. That's really good, uh, one digit MARD. Uh, that means all CGMs are really kind of equal in terms of accuracy. Um, and they are very reliable um, to manage the diabetes. Now, what about the future? What does the future look like? So I'm gonna just give you a very conceptual idea about the future. And all the companies that I mentioned earlier are working in the same direction in a, their own way um, to meet this kind of a concept of future. The future should be no calibration, which currently G6, Libre, they do not require calibration at all. And the Medtronic ever since are moving in that direction um, of eliminating calibration. They should have a replaced claim, meaning by that you can do an insulin without doing a confirmatory glucose reading from your uh, capillary or a glucose meter, which again, Dexcom, G6, Libre are approved for that. Um, smaller and smaller devices so that the more patients can use that. Um, the longer lasting, um, the concept is that the smaller device, but that can last for a really long period of time. That means it's a, it's a really valuable asset for many patients. They don't need to change it multiple times. It's a convenience for them. Um, and again, uh, most companies will try to combine the sensor and transmitter and everything into one single piece. Like for example, Libre, it's just one piece. Use that and throw it. That's a disposable, right? Uh, but other CGMs are not at this moment. The Dexcom has a separate sensor, separate transmitter. Eversense has a separate transmitter sensor. Same thing with the Medtronic. So those things will change in future where you will have just one small disc disposable. Um, and then you just use that one time um, and, and uh, it will last for a longer period of time. Also cost effectiveness. That's where the companies are moving to make it a very cheap um, cost effective so that everyone with diabetes can afford it, whether it's type one or type two. Interoperable, where I mentioned about the concept of ICGM by the FDA, meaning by that, once you get the ICGM category, your system can be combined to any other um, FDA approved interoperable devices without going through a different kind of like a clinical trial and FDA approval process, which will speed up the process of getting a newer technology to the patients at, you know, at faster. And it will be also cost effective because the companies don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars 
in doing a clinical trial and getting an uh, approval by the FDA. And also the future is about like combining the pump and CGM, everything into like a one disc, small disc, uh, wearable patch. Um, and that will deliver you insulin. It will also sense the glucose values. Everything will be transmitted to your iPhone or a smartphone, and then you can operate everything through that phone. Um, so that, that's, that's how I think the future direction is moving. And I'm just showing you this one slide about different companies. And they are, again, they all have one kind of like a common goal of making it smaller, longer, um, that can deliver both, you know, those kind of things that I, I showed you, that, those concept of future CGM. But they each one has the kind of a different technical ways to reach that uh, goal. Now, again, the Medtronic, as we know that they have a kind of a 670G hybrid closed loop system right now. They are planning to change their sensor that is under clinical trial. The sensor will be longer lasting. It will be factory calibrated, uh, would probably not require calibration. And then they are planning to have a one site where it can deliver the insulin and it also can sense the glucose value. So it is called as duo. That means combined of sensor and the infusion set. But then you still will have a separate pump, uh, but then in future it will be uh, everything uh, in a one patch. Uh, similarly, the Dexcom right now, it's uh, doing a clinical trial with the G7. G7 is going to be like a, a size of a single dime, um, small coin, uh, very thin. Uh, again, sensor, transmitter, everything will be in like a one patch. You just use that like a Libre right now and then throw them. We know that the Libre 3 got the CU mark or CE mark, sorry. Uh, that's an European um, analogs to the FDA. Um, it's very small, actually, disc and uh, as good accuracy as uh, you can think of. Um, and we are really excited that we should get that in US as well in future. Um, and uh, Eversense also has a lot of things in a pipeline. They wanna have one sensor that can last for the entire year, a smaller sensor. And also they are planning to have uh, something kind of customizable, meaning by that you can turn off the alerts, you can turn on the alerts, it can be a flash versus real time um, and those kind of a things so that the patients with type two diabetes who does not require much alerts like type one diabetes can use that without alerts versus type one where you sometimes need those kind of an alerts when your glucose is really low. Um, and it, it will be kind of a customizable for type one versus type two in the future. Not only that, uh, the future is about uh, gamification of our health. Uh, what I mean by that, we all use the game nowadays, right? We, we call it like we used to learn by doing and now we learn by playing. Um, I hardly see anybody who don't play games uh, in, in their phone when you are actually traveling, which we are not traveling due to this corona pandemic. But whenever I travel and I'm sitting at the airport, you see that all these people are sitting and then just like playing something, right? Um, so millions of, it's, it's a billion dollar industry. Uh, a lot of billions of dollars are spent in game. Then why not to use the game for health? So this concept is that, um, and this isn't just the one example of the Metronic uh, inner circle where um, you make your group, like you make a WhatsApp group. Here it's your group of people with type one diabetes or type two diabetes, and you make your target, okay. Um, I'm going to now achieve my time in range of about 80%, okay? And let's see who is going to achieve that. And whosoever achieves that will earn some kind of a points. Now, the points can be used for various things where it can give you, let's say, for example, Amazon gift card um, uh, so that uh, you can buy something from that. So it's a monetary compensation versus it can be just the emotional uh, or uh, or kind of a social um, context where it can say, oh, you did the best out of those 50 individuals in your group, you know, something like that. Those things really helps because uh, competition helps overall, right? Um, and I think the gamification of this um, health in management of type 1 diabetes, I feel like it's going to be very exciting in future. Um, and and uh, hopefully we'll have some clinical trial as well to demonstrate that it, it works very well. With that, I'm gonna um, just conclude my talk um, that the current generation CGM systems are very accurate, uh, very good. Um, the future again looks even brighter than today. And the focus is moving towards a smart, small system and integrated system with the pumps and other kind of a smart pens so that life uh, of people with type one and type two diabetes will be easier in improving their glycemic control.
with that, uh, I would like to thank everyone for listening to this talk and your kind attention and happy to take some questions.